Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall. In my last update video I had mentioned at the end of it the, about building a plate girder bridge for this section of the layout and if anybody wanted me to do a wee um, how-to video uh, to drop a, a message in the in the boxes below well a few of you have come back and said that you would like to, me to, to go through the process so this video is a how-to build a plate girder bridge so first off um, I think so, um, I had already shown these in in the update video but now painted I have the abutments for both sides of the bridge now these have been built in exactly the same way as I did for the um, the previous bridge or tunnel portal whatever you want to call it and the video is up there should you want to go back and have a look as to how I went about that but now that these are done I can now work on the plate girder bridge itself now one thing about this section is trying to get everything in because the baseboard for the track is all screwed down I can't lift sections out and plop a whole um, bridge into this position I'm going to have to uh, build it in sections and then put it into position afterwards which is a wee bit tricky but it's just one of those things so to start with I have a sheet of plastic card cut roughly to the shape that is required to sit in underneath the bridge now, this is an old um, off cut of stuff that I had it's actually um, it's got a brick relief to it but the other side of it is smooth and that's the bit that will face down it's nice and thick it's about two mils thick so there's not too much play in it so it'll give a good uh, base for the the plate girders to be attached to uh, just to show you how it all goes together what we'll have to do is the idea is the plate girders will be glued on to either side of this this will then slide in under that I then have to position these abutments on either side and that will be the finished article with plate girders obviously across there so first off base needs to be measured and cut to the relevant size need to leave enough of a space on either side to ensure that we have enough space to, to glue the abutment to or sorry to glue the plate girder bridge to to fit with in between the abutments so now that that's done well I haven't trimmed the final cut of this I'll start building the plate girder bridges first I don't know exactly what the dimensions of those are yet but um, once I do then we can trim this last piece of plastic card and it will fit in place so we'll go over to the workbench and we'll start making um, or we'll make we'll make a start on the uh, the actual girders right so at the workbench um, I've already taken measurements of the span that the girder bridge or the plate girder section is going to have to uh, bridge um, and I've also taken measurements of the abutments to which the plate girder bridge will sit behind now I don't want the the girders to sit above those abutments so that measurement in my case is 25 millimeters because the bridge is on a curved section of track um, one side of the plate girder bridge will be slightly longer than the other uh, and this turns out to be a, a five mil difference so one side's going to be 13 point or sorry 135 mils and the other side 140 mils so an ordinary sheet of plastic card and um, I think this is sort of what half mil plastic card and I have already made the initial cuttings for one side of the bridge now you could probably buy thicker plastic card but I like working in this stuff here and if I do need to make it thicker I just sandwich two sections together so that's what I need to do first Um, I'm just using standard Revel um, contact to glue 
um, it bonds very well to the plastic and in the heat that I have up here in the loft at the minute it dries in no time at all so So we'll bond that together, Let's get rid of the sticky hands. And just by pressing it against the surface, make sure that we get a nice clean join, uh, even join along the bottom. And then we can do the same with the top. Now, one of these is actually just slightly out here so I'll give that glue just a few minutes to, to dry and then I can make the the relevant um, trimmings to the ends to make sure that everything is sitting nice and neat now before we carry on a little bit further I'm just going to make one small adjustment to this wee section of plastic just to give the the bridge a slightly added feature I'm going to um, curve both ends now all I have found was this little, uh, I think it actually came from a baby feed container. Um, so by setting that into the corner on both edges, mark it with a pencil. gives you your guideline for doing the trimming. Now you can either use a pair of scissors or a craft knife and trim that edge off. I'll go and do this and then I'll come back to you whenever we're at the next stage. Right. Curves cut. I've just given them a wee bit of sanding too just to soften those edges where um, the cut happens. Um, use a very fine sandpaper. Don't use anything with too heavy a grip because you'll find that you'll you'll create chunks out of it um, so just a very fine sandpaper rubbing it back and forth forward and checking as you go and that already sort of begins to look a little bit more of a feature next stage is to run a strip of plastic card right round the outer edges of it to give the effect of the outer edges of the steel um, workings of the girder I've cut two sections of plastic card. The one, uh, oh gosh, can't even get it into the, the, the hole of the shot on the camera. It's over long, but it makes it an awful lot easier to work with. I've also roughly marked out a guideline on in pencil on the centre of this piece of stri um, strip of plastic card to just help me guide the this section of plate onto it and what I'm going to do is set it into the middle press it down and then fold up either at both ends and glue in place now again the Revel contact glue works a treat on this and again in this heat dries off very quickly an extra pair of hands would be useful but it is manageable on your own so let's try and do this now So trying to guide it into the centre as much as possible. It doesn't really matter. I think as long as it's even on both sides, if it's slightly shallower on one side, it's not going to make much of a difference. Particularly whenever you're viewing it from that sort of viewing distance that most, uh, most people will be. So hold that up there. And we'll just give that a few minutes to stick and I am always checking just as it's sticking to make sure that everything's sitting where it should be and fold up the other side. Let's 
it's not too bad. Just keep the pressure as well on the strip running along the base just to make sure that it bonds well to both, both pieces bond well together. Okay, so once that's bonded, we'll take the knife and we'll trim both ends off. And if you were to try and measure a piece of plastic, wrap it around, invariably you would be left short at one end. So by going over length, at least you can trim it back to the right size. But don't throw those pieces out, they'll come in useful now whenever we're doing the vertical sections. So, a little bit further on. And it sits nicely, I think. So I'm just checking this off camera on what I know is a smooth surface. And that's fine. Right, we'll move those away and we'll keep those pieces for later on. The next bit is a little bit more straightforward. This section onto this piece of plastic card. Again, give it a bit of pressure just to hold it in place until it, the glue begins to set. And once again, whenever this has dried, trim off the ends. And in good Blue Peter style, I've already done one. This is the other side. Okay, so we've already got the makings of our plate girder bridge. If there's any rough bits at the edge, just sand them back. But I'll do that, I'll leave these to dry overnight now, before I move on to the next stage. Now that's taken less than 10 minutes to produce that there. Okay. So in the next stage, we'll start doing the vertical ones here. But I'll let these sit and cure overnight first, uh, and we'll come back to that the next evening. Alright. Okay, so we're a couple of nights further on from the initial gluing and everything is now cured nicely and we're ready for the next stage and the next stage is to fit in the vertical strips to the plate girders you can see on the camera there that there are six lines pencil lines drawn and what I've done is I've measured the length of the bridge and I've been able to work out that I can have six uh, or seven plate girder sections um, at 20 mil intervals right the way across. So by marking it with a pencil, taking your ruler, getting a, a right angled um, line drawn down, that'll just help for the guidelines. Now, the depth of the bridge is 25 millimeters. On one side, I need to make each of these vertical strips 24 millimeters. And that is in order that I can fit the base to it. Now what I've done is I've already completed the other plate girder bridge or side and that's it here. 
and as you can see on one side there's a gap at the bottom and this will allow for a nice snug fit of the plate or of the base to the plate so whenever it comes to fitting everything together um, it will slot into place and sit perfectly for you like so so on one side I need to cut 24 mil strips and on the other side 25 mil now do you remember those little off cuts that we had from the wrap arounds um, earlier on well I've taken those and uh, again measuring the depth of your um, your space between uh, this section and the upper section you can cut your little strips and I have them here so these are my 24s and up at the top are my 25s these are about uh, one and a half millimeters one three quarter millimeters in depth so let's take this one here we'll start with my 24s and with a pair of tweezers run a strip of glue up along the top if there's any bubbles of it you can wipe it off now not that big a deal because at the end of the day we are going to uh, prime and paint the, uh, the sections whenever they're finished now I'm going to work down here only because I can see it better behind the camera rather than start right at the end and I'm using that pencil line to guide the strip on and then just by eye really more than anything else checking to make sure that it is one not sitting at a jaunty angle on either side and also that it runs straight from top to bottom now, there might be the oddest little kink out of position again I wouldn't worry too much about it if you find that's the case from the viewing angle that you're going to have you're probably not going to even notice it now once again it's quite a warm evening and the glue sets fairly quickly in this um, so you don't have an awful lot of time to hang around uh, there's a wee bit of a bend in that but and that's one in place and let's say we have the little gap at the bottom which will fit the base of the um, base of the bridge into so I'm going to go and finish these off you don't need to be watching me producing what another 11 of these on either side but that's the format and whenever it's done You've one side like that, and then the other complete to the bottom. Now the purists would probably say that you need to have rivets running around each plate section, and they're probably right. However, one, I've tried it in the past, cre um, creating little rivets along the plastic, by pr and uh, pressing indentations into the plastic, but it's very very difficult to get a true line I do believe there are little strips like sticker strips that you can get that have rivets on them but I was more than happy with the result that I got off the um, the diorama display but I don't think I'm going to bother adding that extra detail in so I'll just go on ahead once that's done that's the bulk of the work of the bridge completed what I do need to do is I'm also thinking of actually adding on to the layout. Actually, I'll take you over to the layout and show you again. Just give me a second. Okay, so this is how the bridge will look. What I've been thinking of is, in a lot of cases with um, double lines, whenever it comes to a bridge crossing, you often find a section of plate girder in the centre of the track between the two. And I guess that's where the plate girders are acting as the supports for 
um, what possibly a concrete base on the underneath of the bridge which then supports the track so if I was to add that little bit of card in there just as a tester my concern was that there might not be the clearance issues as the tracks on a curve and therefore as the, 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 the coaches swing round that they would clip the end of the bridges there's a, a coach on that side no problem and a coach on that side and no problems so I think actually what I will do is I'll add I'll produce an additional section of plate girder to put in the, the, the center of it and I'll just add a little bit more of a feature to the bridge and then on the underside of the section here we'll have the plate girder stripped down here which that snuggle uh, um, this piece will snuggle into and equally on the other side and then what I'll also do is I'll run a, um, a similar strip of plastic card down the center to represent that plate girder in the middle. Now who's going to see it? It's a very low bridge. Let's take a vehicle. It's a very low bridge. You're not going to be able to see under it but it's just nice to have these things completed in such a way that um, in my head anyway it's it's realistic and prototypical. So that's the thoughts. So anyway, I'll go away, I'll finish these strips, I'll make up my new centre uh, plate girder. What I can do, yes, I can, I'll do that, and then we'll connect these pieces to the base, add the strip, and then it's ready for the painting process. Back soon. Okay, so the bridge is done. As you can see, I've now painted it. It's set in place. I haven't bothered showing the printing process in this video. Um, it's something I'll maybe do in a future how-to video uh, showing you how I go about weathering this type of um, structure. Um, I will say that uh, I used a Halfords Grey primer initially on all the pieces um, and then on top of that has been uh, a number of different colours of acrylics, mainly uh, blacks, uh, a red oxide and a hint of green um, as well just to bring out um, an element of the weathering to it. One thing I didn't show, I don't think I showed in the actual um, construction of the video was underneath the bridge running um, across on each side I have run two little strips of plastic card and this Again, you know, you're you not going to see this. Let me just take this off the tripod. If you look underneath the bridge, you can just see there's a little gap between the actual plate girder bridge and the brick abutments. And the reason I wanted that was because if you observe any prototypical building or bridges, there's always a little bit of a gap, um, which I think is they, have, they suspend the bridge in some way, like on... Um, uh, springs of some description so that whenever stock goes over the top of it there's a certain amount of play so I just wanted to represent that in underneath to the to most bystanders you won't you won't even see that but it's there so uh, why not have it as you can see I ended up going with the center section still not 100% sure whether it was necessary or not but I do think it just adds to the overall look of the bridge and once everything's ballasted in around there I think it'll look quite effective. Whenever I was making it as you can see I did it in the same way as the other I added the plastic strip along the bottom you're not going to see that once the ballast is in place but it did help whenever it came to fixing the the, the piece to the uh, to the baseboard. So there we go and um, I hope you found this video uh, interesting I hope it's useful to you and um, if it is and it can help somebody um, with the construction of their own plate girder bridge, well, uh, I think then it's been a success. And overall, uh, making time, we're probably talking an hour and a half's work. 
uh, it doesn't take long to make up the plate girders very quick and easy to put together the painting process depending how much weathering you want to put into it extends that a little bit longer but yeah you're talking about an hour and a half's work over a couple of nights you know it's 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 not it's not a massive amount of time uh, and what you do get for that is a plate girder to your your own dimensions and um, to suit your particular layout without having to maybe cut and chop and um, you know a, a pico a pico option say for example so anyway thanks for watching um, please comment please like and uh, even subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more videos like this and further updates on the actual layout and until the next time um, bye for now see ya